But if you have asked a question and if I have uh, not answered it, if you asked a question in the WeChat and I didn't answer it, I'm really sorry. Um, if I don't get to it, please type it into uh, my Gather Town message. That would be great. And I might take this out. I think that's good. Okay, great. So. Okay, so we should be screen sharing now. And I'll flip back to the beginning. So today we're talking about the flow of debate, how to formulate the basic answers. How to formulate the basic answers. So uh, how does how does it work? How does a debate work? Uh, we had a kind of overview of debate yesterday with Donio, and today we're going to go into more detail about the, the answers that a defender can give. But basically, to recap, this is the process. The challenger will make statements at a defender. So a challenger will say, you know, take flower, it follows, it is a form, et cetera, et cetera. And they'll do that until the, the defender will accept or reject these uh, propositions, these theses, until they've committed themselves to a, a kind of main thesis position through their responses. Once the defender has committed themselves to a main thesis response, the challenger will continue to uh, propose statements to the defender and get the defender to commit themselves to all sorts of other positions as well. And the trick is that the challenger will kind of take the defender on a journey. They'll go like, you know, they'll do a big detour and they'll come back around to the main thesis question and they will try to trap the defender into committing themselves to a view that directly contradicts their main thesis position. And that's where you get that sa. That's where you get the big sa, the final sa, which, you know, ends the debate because that's when the defender has to admit that their view is contradictory. Great, okay. So quick show of hands, does that generally make sense? Okay. Excellent, okay. That's great. It's great to get some feedback because otherwise I'm just like, you know, talking at a screen. Excellent, thank you guys. So, <clears throat> the thesis. All debates begin with a thesis, a statement that can be accepted or questioned. For example, a flower is a form. So yesterday we did this in the drills, so this should be kind of clear maybe. Uh, a thesis is the subject and the predicate, as Donio said yesterday, where the subject is or has the predicate. So it could be a flower is a form or a flower has a form, either of those would be an adequate uh, thesis. Now, um, just out of interest, if I was to um, ask you guys, do you think that, take the subject, a flower, it follows that it is form, who would say accept? Okay, interesting, okay. So if I said, uh, who would say why, which is the other response? Who would ask why? Okay, a few people would ask why, but it doesn't seem that there is as many as would accept it. So that's interesting, we'll come back to that. So we start with the thesis, and as we said before, there are two responses to the thesis. First, the challenger posits the thesis to the defender, for example, a flower, the subject, is a form, the predicate. Uh, so the defender is going to posit the thesis, and as we all know from yesterday, the defender is either going to accept or is going to say why. Great. Except means the defender agrees with the statement, i.e. 
the defender agrees that a flower is a form. Uh, if they say why, it usually means that they do not agree with the thesis. For example, the defender believes that flower is not a form. So I think, I'm hoping that should be clear. So let's go on to the next one now. Okay. So if the defender says why, that is when the challenger will give a reason. That's when the challenger will give a reason. So remembering that we have the subject, the predicate, and the reason, the subject a flower, the predicate is form, the reason because it is a shape. So if the defender doesn't but doesn't accept that flower is a form, then the challenger will provide the reason because it is shape, for example. So what responses then can the defender give to the reason because it is a shape? And we have three options. We have three options. If the defender responds why to the thesis, then the challenger will usually give a reason. For example, the challenger could say, flower is a form because it is something given over to experience through the eye sensing modality and seen in the domain of visual consciousness, which is our definition of form. Alternatively, they could answer because it is a shape, which is one category of form. So these are possibilities of what the challenger can say as the reason. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what counts as a good reason later on. But for the moment, let's just stick with the reason because it is a shape, which is one category of form. So once the challenger gives the reason, then the defender has three possible responses. They can say, I accept. They can say, reason not true. Or they can say, no pervasion. So, I accept, I've written here accept, but it should be I accept, means that the defender has changed her mind and now agrees with the original thesis. So they now accept the proposition that uh, flower is a form. Okay. So just a quick show of hands. So far, so good? Okay, great. Excellent. So now, if the uh, defender does not accept, now after the reason they have two choices, if they don't accept, they can say reason not true. And reason not true means that the subject is not the reason. The subject is not the reason. So you can forget about the predicate for this one. All you need to worry about is the question, is a flower a shape? Is a flower a shape? And if you think that a flower is not a shape, then you will say reason not true. And that's why there's a lovely little cross up here, meaning a flower is not a shape. Right. So that's what it means. That, that is the situation when you would say reason not true. The subject is not the reason. The subject is not the reason. So in my opinion, the best way to do this is to take your three fingers, because you've always got your three fingers with you, and to count them off. And I know, you know, maybe this sounds silly, but the amount of times that I've, you know, been in debate and I've got confused and I've had to kind of work it out on my fingers, you know, it saved me a lot of time. So that's why I want to share this with you. The subject, the predicate, the reason. The subject, the predicate, the reason. Right. Flower is a form because it is shape. So one to three is uh, the first question. Is flower a shape? One to three, is flower a shape? And if you say no to that, that's when you say reason not true. So let's have another show of hands. Who thinks that uh, a flower 
is not a shape. Who thinks a flower is not a shape? Okay, great. So then you guys, you should have said why to the first one. I'm, I'm assuming that you said why to the, the first thesis, which was take the subject flower, it follows, it is a form. And then you say why? And then I say because it is a shape. And then you guys who just put your hand up would say, uh-uh, reason not true. Flower is not a shape. One is not three. Subject is not reason. So far, so good. <laughs> Great, okay, a few hands. <laughs> if you're really confused, then don't worry. We'll go over this and it will become clear. So that's the first one. The next one, no pervasion. So if you accept that the reason is true, then the next question you ask yourself is, is there pervasion? And this time the question is, if the reason, then not necessarily the predicate. So if you accept that, if the reason then not necessarily the predicate, that's when you would say no pervasion. So here it means that, uh, no pervasion would mean that uh, if something is a shape, it is not necessarily a form. So not everything that is a shape is a form. And in this one, you can forget about the subject. You can leave that behind, that's why it's in gray, right? So everything, if you accept that everything that is a shape is a form, you would accept there is pervasion. If you do not, if you think that there is something that is a shape that is not a form, then you would not accept pervasion. So the question you ask yourself is, is there, is everything that is a shape a form? If you think the reason is true, so if you've, uh, you've accepted that a flower is a shape and you can think of an example of a shape that is not a form then you will answer no pervasion meaning if you think that if the reason then not necessarily the predicate is the case right so <laughs> who thinks that with a show of hands who thinks that If something is a shape, it is not necessarily a form. Who thinks that if something is a shape, it is not necessarily a form? Oh, I didn't have the screen share on. I'm so sorry. Let me put it on. Okay, I'm so sorry, yeah? Now you can probably see a little bit better. If the reason they're not necessarily the predicate. If a shape, then not necessarily a form. If a shape, then not necessarily a form. So if you can think of an example of a shape that is not a form, then you will answer no pervasion. So now we'll try show of hands. If the reason, then not necessarily the predicate, i.e., if something is a shape, it is not necessarily a form, who thinks that's the case? If something is a shape, it's not necessarily a form. Great. Okay. Couple of people. Excellent. So if that's you, then you're going to add to no pervasion. Right. So I am going to ask, just to be really annoying, somebody that just put their hand up, maybe you could, um, uh, maybe you could write into the chat what an example might be of that no pervasion. What is an example of something that is a shape but not a form? That would be great. We just got a question. Oh. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm still getting used to this screen sharing business, so I'm, you'll have to <laughs> forgive me for that. Right. Uh, so, Sunam Reason has just said a cloud. 
So that's great. So this means that according to Sonam Rigson's position, a cloud is something which is a shape but not a form. Uh, oh, and we've got another one, an image in my mind. Lovely. So according to Andreas, an image in his mind is a shape but not a form. Great. Excellent. I'm really glad. I mean, these are super duper like uh, things to start debating about. Uh, there's one more question from the chat that says, "If what if it is both reason not true and no pervasion? What should be what should we say?" Great question. That's from Legsum. Uh, if it's both, you say reason not true. First, you ask yourself if the reason is true, and if it is, then you ask yourself about no pervasion. But if it if uh, if it is both, you would say reason not true. Right. So looking at the fingers, it goes like this. Flower is a uh, form because it is shape. Is flower shape? If you say it is, then you say, if you agree that it is, you would ask yourself, is everything that is a uh, shape a form? And if you think that they're both true, then you're going to say, I accept. Right. Oh, another example, light. Haha. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, Let's go back to, it looks complicated and it is. <laughs> Screen sharing again, I apologize again. Right, it looks complicated and it is. But once you try a few times, it becomes intuitive and the responses will just roll off your tongue. In the meantime, a good method is to count the connections on your fingers, which we were doing. So in summary, uh, when someone presents a thesis, you can say, I accept, or you can say, why? Uh, if someone says, why, then the challenger can posit a reason. And to the reason, you can say, reason not, it should be reason not true. My mistake, please uh, correct this. Not, not established, it should be not true, or no pervasion or I accept. These are some of the basic responses. These are like the four basic responses that you learn first. There are some more complicated responses and we can definitely go into that uh, later or maybe, you know, sometime after this uh, event. But for the moment, they're, they're the real kind of, you know, meat and potatoes of how to answer a debate. So, um, We'll come back to that. So, uh, first of all, are there any questions about that stuff? Like any any questions that that you think will prohibit you from trying these out? Okay, so. Um, now I'm going to invite uh, Geshela to uh, <laughs> go through some of the drills with me. This is the easy part, um, to go through some of the drills with me. Uh, and we're really lucky to have him, so I really appreciate his being here. Um, and uh, uh, I will share the screen again, and we'll just go through a few examples of the drills so you guys can get a good idea. Okay, great. So the first drill, uh, day 2.1, drill one, choosing your responses. So some of us did this in the European practice session. Some of us uh, jumped ahead to this, but if you didn't, if you didn't, then we'll just have, have a quick look now. So um, Geshla, with your permission, I will be the challenger. Sure, sure. <clears throat> yes. And so the challenger will, will read this first one and this second one, which constitutes the thesis. So I will say, when I proceed to our church, take the subject, the Empire State Building. It follows, it is shape. I accept. Because? Because it is a something reasonably identified as a shape. Great. So that's the definition, yeah? Take the subject, the Empire State Building. It follows, it is high shape. I accept. Uh, 
It follows it is high shape because because it is shape characterized by tallness. Excellent. Take the subject the Empire State Building. It follows it is even shape. I accept. Uh, it is even shape because because it is shape characterized by evenness or flatness. Great. So you guys get the idea. Keep in mind that if uh, Geshela says why, then I will respond with the reason. And then he will respond with either reason not true, no pervasion, or I accept. So that's drill number one. Drill number two is similar, but this time we have to provide our own reasons. We have to provide our own reasons. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's try, shall we? Sure, sure. <clears throat> so take the subject the smell of garbage it follows that it is smell I accept <clears throat> it is smell because because it's a object that given uh, uh, how to say it's a <laughs> so, uh, uh, sensory what the, uh, I forget it almost um yeah, can you help me how to? It, uh... um, <laughs> yes, I can. I'll just let me just come back to uh, turn the screen sharing off for a second. Okay. So then, what we can do is we can go and look at our debate outline, right? right. So I'll pull up the debate outline, and this will provide some answers when we get stuck. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's look at the simplified debate outline. Okay. So remember that the sorts of things that can count as um, as reasons, they can be categories we looked at, or they can be definitions, and there are some other things as well. Yeah. Yeah. But let's have a look. So. Because I think it's a because an object given over experience through the. Um, trunk sense or right uh, through the nose sensing modality, yeah, nose sensing modality and uh, um, feeling in the domain of um, sensing consciousness, all right. right? Yeah, okay, great. So, an object given over to experience the nose sensing modality and smelled in the domain of olfactory consciousness is the one that we have for the definition, right? Okay, yeah. sorry, Geshla, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, no. no. Okay, go ahead. So, then the next one is. Oh, now I've lost it. Okay. So, uh, take the subject, the flavor of masala. It follows, it is smell. Why? Uh, it is smell because, and we can go back to. This one, it is smell because it is an object given over to experience through the nose sensing modality and smelled in the domain of olfactory consciousness. Um, reason not true. Mm, okay, so what does that mean there? Reason not true. That means that, well, let me, sorry, I'm jumping around everywhere. Yeah. Okay, because... so that means that for Geshila, uh, the, the subject is a taste of masala, the predicate is is a smell, and the reason is because it's an object uh, given, given over to experience through the nose sensing modality and smelled in the domain of olfactory consciousness. So that means that for Geshula, he doesn't think that the smell of masala, the, sorry, the, the taste of masala, is an object given over to experience through the nose sensing modality and smelled in the domain of olfactory consciousness. So quick show of hands, does that make sense to you guys? Great, that is exciting. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so that's how that one works. And then, And then drill three, 
this is where we'll focus particularly on reason true or reason not true. Reason true or reason not true. So, um, Geshe-la, yes. can you respond either reason true or reason not true to my following reasons? Okay, sure, sure. Okay, or we can swap if you'd prefer to. Uh, yeah, go on, continuous. I uh, would prefer to depend on Okay, great. So, yeah. take the subject a flower. It follows it is interior matter because it is matter. Um, no pervasion, right? No pervasion. So, this means that for Geshe-la, um, it is not the case that everything that is matter is necessarily interior matter. So he thinks that there is something that is matter that is not interior matter. And I, I'm guessing that the example of that would be <coughs> exterior matter. Yes. Great. We're on the same page. Okay, so take the subject of flower. It follows it is interior matter because it is an elephant. It's elephant? Oh, the uh, reason not true. Reason not true. Okay. So here, Geshe-la uh, thinks that um, a flower is not an elephant. That's right. So take the subject of flower. It follows it is exterior matter because it is matter. Mm. Uh, no probation. No probation. Great. So <clears throat> geshe -la is giving like the, the correct answers, yeah? For you guys, when you could do this drill, um, you don't have to worry about... Uh, whether there's pervasion or no pervasion, you can just stick to whether the reason is true or whether the reason is not true, yeah? So you can just look at the question, is the subject the reason? Is a flower matter? And you can just say reason true. But Geshe-la is combining both of the, the, the answers together. And then drill four is where we'll focus on pervasion or no pervasion. So this okay. one, you just have to answer if you think there's probation or no probation. I see. So um, I just a little bit ago, uh, my answer is a little bit ahead. But it's yeah, exactly. I guess she was like jump, jumping ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so for this one, um, uh, we can, we'll just look at the probation for this one. Take the subject of flower. It follows it is interior matter because it is matter. So geshe is going to answer based on whether he thinks everything that is matter is necessarily interior matter. Right. And so based on his answer for the last one, <laughs> I'm guessing he's going to say no pervasion. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's a, okay. yeah, perfect. All right. uh, take the subject of flower. It follows it is exterior matter because it is an elephant. Uh, reason not true. I think... Yeah, this is the good illustration. Even we happy to it, but not the, you know the question. One of the uh, our you know participators' question is really great. That's uh, even I was have to think about that. Oh, yeah. so so in the, you are illustrated very good because we have to check the first one is whether this you know the subject is a reason or not, and once you you done that, in, if that is true. Then you take to second there's a provision or no provision exactly that's really good there. yeah okay. um okay so um is that kind of clear maybe a show of hands to sort of check that you guys feel comfortable to be able to be doing those okay excellent so um Geshe-la, i think uh, one thing maybe um, you could use a little bit about the the second drill because they have a uh, two component because in some sense you have to build the um, reason or in some sense you have to uh, one of and later you have to build the subject and the predicate at that one. Yes, yes, quite right. Yes, I forgot about that. Yes, so uh, in the in this drill, in drill number two. We start off where you guys have to supply your own reasons, but later on we make it even a step harder. And uh, down here, and you guys have to provide both your own predicate and your own reason, both your own predicate and your own reason. That's true. Okay. 
All right. So, um, Geshla, is that? Do you think that covers? Yeah, very more? much. Great. I think it's very much. Excellent. So, what we'll do now is we will break out uh, for a short period of time, and then we'll come back. And I'm really hoping that Geshla is is able to, or is willing to, uh, give a little debate demonstration with me on a really interesting topic. Um, and uh, so if he is, then that would be great. So sure, sure, we'll do that. <laughs> I will try to, we will okay. try to our best. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on one hand, I really, because I mean, while we've got Geshla here, you know, it would be silly just to have him answering, you know, drills. It would be great for you guys to actually see how it, <laughs> see that, you know, see a, a debate master in action. Um, Great. So, but for the moment, um, if you guys want to head out and do those drills, and I will call you back um, with a very hopefully lovely, beautiful sounding gong um, at the appropriate time. Okay. And if you've got any questions, you can come up and ask me or ask any of the, the coaches or the organizers. Uh, yeah. Uh. Okay, so um, should I go first or? If you like, yes. Yeah, okay. So take the subject, the Empire State Building. It follows that it is shape. I accept. Because? Because it is something reasonably identified as shape. Okay. Take the, take the subject, the Empire State Building. It follows that it is high shape. Why? Because it is a shape characterized by tallness. Um, reason not true. Okay. Okay, then I'll do two now. Yeah, three take, and four. Yeah, take the shape, the Empire State Building. It follows, it is shape, it, it is, sorry, it is an even shape. Why? Because it is a shape characterized by evenness or flatness. Reason not true. Okay, then the next one uh, take the subject sound waves. It follows that it is sound. I accept. And because? Because it is an object given over to experience through the ear, ear sensing mod, modality and, and heard in the domain of auditory consciousness. OK. OK, then you, well, you next. Yeah. We got one more person, actually. That's uh, probably oh. most uh, Hello, Bazamba. 
Hello, Mark. <laughs> Kate is on there. <laughs> I, I thought it must have been you. Hello. Yes. Uh, nice to see you. Hello. Yeah. Hello. This is Dominic. Oh, Dominic. Hi. Hello. And then you're in uh, Bali? Yes. <laughs> ah, yeah. Still haven't left Bali. Beautiful Bali. <laughs> All right, so then uh, do you want to um, have a try? Oh, what are you doing now? Uh, we're in um, the uh, drill uh, one, so day 2.1, drill one. Um, Using your just, responses. Just the read through. Yes. Just the read through, but we have to choose which one. Mm -hmm. So we're up to five, number five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you you want to do it or who is the challenger? Well, well we've been doing it. Do you want to do it with your friend, Dominic? Um, I was just interested in to see how other people doing it because we were doing the drill this uh, uh, afternoon already. Mm. Okay. Okay, Elroy, do you want to go with Kate? Yeah, I will go, yeah. So um, I, we're doing number five. That mm. uh, Take the subject, the sound of bells. It follows that it is sound. I accept. Uh, uh, because? Because it is an object given over to experience through the ear sensing modality and heard in the domain of auditory consciousness. Okay. So let's do one more. Take the subject, the sound of bell. It follows that it is in intelligent able sound. Mm. Why? Because it is an object in the domain of auditory consciousness, which which creates an understanding of semantic content. Hmm. But how would I do this if not all the sound of bells are like that? Uh, then you can say reason not true. But in a way, it is. <laughs> uh, maybe actually we can ask the the this actually the the, the person with the flower. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. it's it's really just so. I mean, it's it's sort of this kind of funny thing where okay, you say some sounds of bells are like that, some are not. So then, this is where it gets a little difficult to figure out how you want to answer but generally if it's not like a complete you know true of the subject completely then you would answer the reason it's not true yeah okay so if it's not a hundred percent then reason not true and then um um Elroy would have to say, give his reason why it's true, I guess. So, yeah, he would. That, that, would, that would be in the next practice round. Yeah, that would be sort of like the next extension. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then what's next? Number seven. Seven and eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll go. Um, take, uh, take the subject, the word hello. It follows that it is sound. I accept. Because? Uh, because it is intelligible sound. Okay. And take this take the subject, the word hello. It follows that it is intelligible sound. It's the same? Oh. Yeah, it is basically, but anyway. Why? Uh, because it is speech equivalent phenomena. Oh, it is speech. Reason not true. Okay. 
Then, oh, number nine, just one. Who's going to do that one? Elroy. Oh, no, maybe, uh, no, they can I, I can read. Yeah. Take the subject, the word hello. It oh. follows that it is an object in the domain of auditory consciousness which creates an uh, understanding of easy. semantic content. You know we have I accept. A handful of people. Because, because, help, because so it is uh, a huge priority, in, but it's always in, nice. And of course, you have yeah, the gentle sound. Ability. Probably to, to help people than intelligent some of the other coaches. But yeah, I would say it's like. Okay. If you have other things, so what's next? Pretty important. Oh yeah, there's more. Well, actually, there's number uh, number two. And then yeah, there are quite there the are other quite a few. Is, that's just the, there is a YouTube. Yeah, there's thirteen pages. For people who okay, didn't want so to go together, next? town slash for people who want I to go, watch it later, so the, subject, the live stream the then automatically bird, gets you know stored on YouTube that so that way people can go back sound. and watch it later. For instance, if they're on the west coast of the U.S. or something I like accept. that, and the timing doesn't work for them because. So that's because the, so it's still uh, it is an object in the domain of ordinary consciousness which does not express a meaning. Take the subject, the gesture of a hand wave. It follows that it is intelligible sound. Why? Because it creates an understanding of semantic content. No pervasion. Okay. Take the subject, the gesture of a hand wave. It follows that it is, oh, sorry, it follows that it creates an understanding of semantic content. I accept. Because? Because it is communication. Okay, then we'll switch. Another yeah. person. Take the subject, the gesture of a hand wave. It follows that it is sound. Why? Because it is intelligible sound. Reason not true. Uh, take the subject, an explosion. It follows that it is sound. Um, why? Because it is an object given over to experience through the ear sensing modality and heard in the domain of auditory consciousness. Mm, I accept. Oh, or what about no pervasion? What does that mean actually? No, no, no pervasion. Uh, it means that uh, an explosion can be something else apart from sound, right? Yeah, it's not necessarily sound. Okay. Did you get that, Elroy? Yeah, more or less, actually. Yeah, so the, the, um, the reason is not necessarily the predicate. Okay. You know, I think that's what no provision means. Is that right, Genler? Yeah, that that's exactly right. If it's the reason, it doesn't have to be the predicate necessarily. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we'll actually cover that in the next session a little bit more in detail, a little bit more, so it gets clearer. Yeah. But really, just repeatedly doing these examples is what makes it the most clear. Maybe if we said the sound of an explosion um, would might be different then. Can we do? Can we distinguish like that? Um, can I? Well, that's a good idea. I mean, that's what you you know you would end up doing in a full on. To if you really pulled, went beyond these drills to keep the debate going, you would have to start doing that. You would say, well, there's no pervasion with an explosion, but then, what about just the sound of an explosion? You know, you would try different subjects and try to hone in on really what you mean. The idea here, of course, is that well, is an explosion by itself? Is its kind of main nature? Is it sound? Is it visual? Is it just the chemical or atomic reaction itself? What actually is the explosion? <laughs> That's sort of the, you know the question. Yeah. 
like the percussive force or something like that. Yeah. Right, right. A force which might even be, you know, not necessarily matter, but more energy or something, right? So it's, yeah, it's open and to... <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, the next one... In this case, uh, uh, sure. it, where is it? Where the explosion... The subject is... Uh, goes well with the predicate so it's not no pervasion right um it's basically up to you to see what your what you feel is the most appropriate answer what what you think is an explosion now it's sort of it's not something that's like clearly defined at least that i know of <laughs> so that's why it's a good debate question An explosion can be more than can one. Can you thing. also say no pervasion if the reason doesn't go to the subject, not to the predicate? If the reason doesn't go to the subject, that's when you say the reason's not true. That's when you give yeah. the reason's not true response. So in this case, uh, in 14, it's reason not true if we choose why. Um, what is, hold on, let me look at which one it is. Which one is it again? Take the subject an explosion, it follows that it is sound. Um, well, oh, I see. Um, oh, that's the belt. I, I mean, I just, I would probably personally say it's not sound. That's my understanding of an explosion. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you that you have to answer that way because you know you might have a different understanding of an explosion and that's where we would go out and then have to clear more clearly define what we really mean by an explosion is it the boom is it the sound or is it just the fact of a large amount of energy quickly you know emitting from a source and moving outwards that causes destruction like mark said yeah, so in it's this really case, a physics. I mean, a physicist would know a lot better <laughs> what an explosion really is. Yeah, but even if we don't really know what it is, just going with this, uh, choosing the answers, if we choose why yeah. and give this reason, uh, then it would be reason not true. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So if you, if you, yes, you would, you would probably say reason not true if you were already denying the thesis, right? Yeah, exactly. That one should come first, like um, they, they said in the lecture. The, yeah. the reason not true comes first, comes before the no probation. So I think you're right there, Kate. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Good point. Good point. Uh, was that the then... sound of the bell or no? Maybe I heard something else. It was just some other background noise. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, then who's reading this next one? Okay. okay. I, I do 15. Take take this subject an explosion. It follows that it is form. Why? Because it is an object given over to experience through the eye seeing modality and seen in the domain of visual consciousness. Reason not true. Mm, the same as the last one. Yeah, it depends on how you understand the explosion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then? But it would be form anyway, because it is either heard or seen. Or felt. It could be hot as well, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's. It could blow you apart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then it's not so good. Um, okay, okay, six. Yep. Six day. Yeah. Take the subject an explosion. It follows that it is not sound. Um why because it is not matter um, 
explosion is not matter. Uh, whatever is not matter is not a sound. Whatever is not matter is not necessarily a sound. Mm, I, I don't know what to say here, to be honest. <laughs> Whether it's reason not true, no probation, or I accept. I guess reason not true. Yeah, I would, I, I would also say reason not true, but... Because an explosion uh, doesn't go with uh, not being matter. Oh, an explosion is not matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct. It, it is matter, so it doesn't go with mm. not matter. Yeah, with the negation of matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just had a senior moment, Kate, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, it, it, it's really, it's quite interesting when you like, when you think about like these things in this like special way, it's. Mm. <laughs> no, it's quite challenging. Yeah. Okay, number 17. Yes. Uh, take, take the subject, the big bang. It follows that it is sound. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because it is an explosion. Uh, I guess there's much more than just sound. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Then uh, take the subject, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. It follows that it is intelligible sound. Uh, why? Because it is sound which expresses meaning. More pervasion again. No, uh, because intelligible sound expresses meaning. Ah, yes. So, so reason not true. Okay, yeah. Uh, this, then who's next? Oh, sorry. Elroy. Elroy. 19. Take the subject, smell of incense. It follows that it is smell. I accept. Because? Because it is a fragrant smell. Okay. Take the subject, smell of incense. It follows that it is natural smell. Why? Because it is, it is a smell that does not arise from mixing ingredients. Yeah, reason not true. Yeah. Okay. Take the smell. Take sorry. Take the subject. The smell of incense. It follows. It is artificial smell. I accept. Because. Because it is a smell that arises from mixing ingredients. Okay, and I'll do the last one also. Take the subject. The smell of soap, it follows that it is artificial smell. Why? Because it is a fruity smell. No pervasion. Oh, there's three more, okay. Oh, what about um, reason not true? Yeah, I thought about it too, but I it's for me more like the smell of soap can be fruity smell, but mm -hmm. not all artificial smell is fruity smell. That was my reasoning. So if the smell of soap uh, can uh, can be a fruity smell, but it can also be um, a non-fruity smell, then would we say that the reason is true? Like some smokes, sm soap doesn't smell fruity. It smells like coal or some sort of chemical yeah. or something. Yeah, that's, 
I, I think that's for me that's really the this the big question like go I more with the subject or the predicate in choosing the response for the reason so I think Geshe said uh, before in the lecture that if if the reason's not true then we have to go with that one first yes okay that's that's I think that's a really good that's a really good thing because otherwise there's maybe confusion so if the reason is not there reason not true the smell of soap and then that your uh, reason would be because it can smell like chemicals or can yeah. smell like I don't know goodness knows what okay then then you can like go and elaborate on mm -hmm. that reason not true okay so but there's actually more here. there's a couple more pages here <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay yeah okay 23 take the subject the flavor of onions it follows that it is not a form why because it is not an object given over to experience through the eye sensing modality and seen in the domain of visual consciousness Oh, yeah, I'm wrong. Um, I accept. Uh, I was thinking form <laughs> in, in the sense that, like matter, you know, matter. I wasn't thinking form as being the object of the eye sensing consciousness. So I was wrong. I had the wrong um, definition of form. Okay, yeah, I accept. <laughs> so it is not a form because. Uh, sorry, uh, you're asking. Ah, uh, so, uh, yeah, no. So we say, okay, I you accept? I was wrong. I should have said I accept. Yeah. yeah okay. But I thought the flavor of onions is a form. No, I think that the flavor of onions is not a form. But you can perceive it uh, through your uh tongue senses it's just the reason is wrong it's using eye sensing but it would be tongue sensing and it will be true so just the reason is not true you're thinking the same as what i was thinking kate because i thought all the there everything is like matter is form but i think in this case form is only an object of the eye sense um, the yes that's 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 the, the definition given in the thing Wait, the outline. In the uh, exterior matter, um, yes. then it's got form, sound, smell, taste, and tactile object. And form, uh, its definition is object given over to experience through the eye sensing modality and seen in the domain of visual consciousness. So I was thinking like you, that form is all of those things. Right? Ah. Like, but that's matter. In this case, it's matter. Yeah. and not form so it's a different uh, definition for form yeah i'm thinking that sort of taste is form sound is form um, but this this is not how they're breaking it up in the divisions yeah so that's that's um i know that can be confusing for people who've already learned that that division it, it was really with the intention of making it less confusing by having the same term with two different meanings but if it's if you've already learned that way then it gets confusing right yeah there's th three divisions of um uh, existent an existent thing it you know i learned was form consciousness and um demanducci uh, well that, not associated, not associated yeah, with compositional the, the divisions for um functioning things right for, for functional things Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, functioning things, yeah, impermanent phenomena, yeah. Impermanent phenomena, exactly, yeah. right, that's, yeah. that is the, the standard uh, ontology or division, yeah. So but we didn't form, go into... No. We're using matter, we're using vampires. Yeah, keeping, we're, uh, we're keeping, I mean, generally when you have the actual full collected topics class and the textbooks and the whole lesson plan, the whole curriculum, uh, the very first lesson is really just about, you know, matter, basically just about matter. So that, you know, you don't really get into those other, you know, the consciousness and the 
uh, the Menduje non-associated mm -hmm. compositional factors until the next lesson. So this is all based on just that first lesson. Yeah. yeah. So I have one question. If I rephrase it a little bit and say, take the subject, the flavor of onions, it follows that it is not exterior matter. Then the defender says, why? And I can I can say because it's the tongue sensing modality. Guess right, then the tongue tongue sensing modality comes in, then there's a definition provided which may be then wrong because form is part of the exterior matter. So the, the, the flavor of onion would actually be exterior matter. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm 24. Take the subject onions. It follows that it is um, not a form. Why? Uh, because it is a taste. Reason not true. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Take the subject, the flavor of onions. It follows that it is not a smell. I accept. Uh, because? Because it is not a fruity smell. I don't know why the fruity came in. Because oh, I would say because it is a flavor. I thought flavor is something to do with taste. Maybe I'm not right. Yeah, this. no, that's correct. It's a, a, the um, the reason's a little funny. Okay, then the next one. You want to, oh, that's it. Finish. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. It's... So then we've still got time, so we can go on to the next... Um, the next one, which is uh, drill two. Okay. How are you doing, Elroy? Yeah, I'm doing okay, actually. Uh, nice. Even actually, like like as you guys are like talking about, it, I'm also thinking about like, okay, what would I choose? And kind yeah, of that's... that. I'm not really like focusing so much on getting the definitions right. I'm just focusing on getting the, you know, like the structure of it right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the method, it's really good, yeah. Okay, then uh, do we want to start with this uh, 2.102? We have to give our own reasons. We have to be using some help of papers. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Okay, so do I. I need my uh, cheat sheet. <laughs> Okay, so um, take the subject, smell of garbage. It follows that is it, it is smell. Mm -hmm. I accept. Because? Because the object given over to experience through the nose sensing modality and smelled in the domain of olfactory consciousness. Okay, that's the definition. Yep. Take the subject, the flavor of masala, it follows that it is smell. Why? Um, then uh, the flavor of masala. Mm. Uh, because it is matter. <laughs> <laughs> No perversion. Yeah. Well, reason not true. Okay. But why? Why reason not true? Masala. The flavor of masala is not matter. Ah, uh, no, it's true. It is matter. <laughs> <laughs> what type of matter? Interior yeah, or exterior? Yeah. Type of matter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. It's um. It is uh, like uh, like um. Well, matter. 
exterior, exterior or interior? Exterior. Uh, I think it was the bell. What is is the is the uh, lecture continue? I had I heard a bell, but I'm not sure. Uh, no, no, I think that's the my plan is to do a little bit of like demonstration of a more elaborated debate with with uh, Gashela and Joe. But yeah, that that, that wasn't the bell because we would see Joe's camera come up if that was the bell. So yeah. maybe she, there's, all, there's like one minute until the next. Okay, my phone again. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, then, yeah, just keep, keep, keep on going. Yeah, okay, that's good. So now maybe Yuri. Okay, take number three, take the subject, the flavor of masala. It follows that it is taste. I accept. Um it is taste because it is taste because it can be experienced through the tongue consciousness? Yes. Next. Take the subject uh, a feather. It, fe it follows that it is tactile object. I accept. It is tactile object because? It is tactile object because, uh, because it, has, uh, it has a physical form. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd, say, uh, I'd say the reason not true. But anyway, then uh, number five. No, but it would be interesting to let's let's do the same example. Just we go another way in order to see how it would turn out. Then, because Mark, you would say reason not true. Mm. Let's okay. I say take the subject a feather. It is fo it follows that it is a tactile object. Then. You would say why? A feather is a, 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 a feather is a tactile because what was the reason again? The first reason. So a feather, uh, it follows it's a tactile object because 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 it is of uh, physical matter. Then I said. Um, uh, mm, Oh, Mark, then, are you trying to give another reason or what? Uh, it doesn't matter. I think I might be wrong. Um, but anyway, we probably need to. No, just... no, no. It's, it would, it, for me, it would be interesting because it's okay. true. Like, let's say if you go to the definition exterior matter of a tactile object, object given over the experience through the body sensing modality. So what is the, the difference between the eye sensing modality which is form mm -hmm. through the body sensing uh, modality do i sense a feather through the body you can but not if you don't have to <laughs> because then i go down it's like this tactile objects and then the elements of tangibility yes so i can like but uh, the, the, uh, the question is 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 is, is is not if it is only a tactile object. The question is, is it a tactile object? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, maybe the, it's a no probation because the reason, because it is um, matter, so whatever is matter is not necessarily a tactile object. So it'd be no probation. Yeah, okay. What do you think? So whatever is matter is not necessarily a tactile object. Yeah, like, uh, can, do you have an example of something which is matter and not tactile? Um, the, so, I, which? Like a sound? Mm. Sound is matter and not as, uh, sound is matter? Sound is yeah. matter, but it's not tactile. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like, a, also a, smell or taste. According to this topology, yeah. 
so yeah then it, it, it's true it's like more pervasion when we see okay because it's matter and then reason not true or no, uh, sorry no pervasion because not everything that is tactile not everything which is matter is tactile yeah. but a feather, a feather is matter we can't yes um, yes that. so yes. Do we have to go beyond that one it's reason not true rule it out then go on yes. to no pervasion yeah yes okay and now there's number five which is the thing again so oh. take this <laughs> Take the subject of feather, it follows that it is matter. <laughs> yeah, Mark, you can go for it. Okay, I accept. It is it is matter because? Uh, it is something that is established, established as particle-like or composed of particles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Me too. Okay. Uh, yeah. Take the subject red. It follows that it is color. I accept. Because? Uh, because it is a primary color. Oh, no. I, can, I don't think I can say that. I think I've got to say something like... Um, because it is suitable uh, as a hue or suitable to be um, what is it the definition because it is suitable as a hue oh, it is something reasonably um, right. described as a hue yeah yeah mm -hmm. next, so, one. next. Take the subject red, it follows that it is shape. Mm, why? Yeah, LA. Why? Uh, shape. Hmm. Because <laughs> it is something reasonably identified as shape. Uh, reason not true. <laughs> Yeah. Number take, eight. Number eight. Okay. Take the take the subject. Sweet taste. It follows that it is exterior matter. Why? Why? Because uh, because it 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 uh, it is experienced through the to the nose consciousness. I accept. Okay, so I'll do the, the next. The sweet taste is experienced through the nose consciousness. Oh, sorry, through the tongue consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> There's a uh, eating sugar, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it's already there. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your participation in this breakout session. Uh, if you would like to slowly make your way back into the temple. That would be lovely. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, nice to see you, Kate. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've been following you on, on Facebook. <laughs> it's good to see old friends. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah saw... she's, from, she's done a lot of study here in um, in uh, at the library. I met, yeah, I met her there. I, we also oh. are friendly from Dharamsala. Oh. It is nice to see you, and that was great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elroy.
Okay, so I think most of us are probably back in the temple by now. Um, maybe I can get another show of hands to see if that was productive, if you felt like that was useful. Oh, great. Awesome. I'm very, very glad to hear it. Um, so uh, maybe, Geshe-la, would you like to... Uh, Shall we do a little demonstration? Uh, sure. Um, you would be the challenger. <laughs> uh, I will try. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know if I'm crazy doing this. Anyway. Can you explain what you are doing at the beginning? <laughs> what that? Uh, so we, I think uh, Donio uh, gave an introduction to okay, okay. this today. Okay. Good. Uh, this is a for those of you just as a recap. This is a, an, an invocation to Manjushri, uh, but I guess I would know more about that than I would. He would be able to explain. Did you want to say a few no, words no, about no, that? Just as a tradition, we do that at the beginning, but uh, but there's some reason the. Or you know the religion's reason we are just kind of believing once we reciting to the Manjushri as a um, wisdom, uh, god of wisdom, or how to say I don't know Buddha of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So um, we will get more wisdom and more intelligence, more sharp your mind, um, uh, sort of that uh, purpose. But uh, we don't necessarily to do when we doing a circular completely circular way. Okay, so Keshla, take the subject light. It follows, it is matter. Oh, um, light. I accept. So take the subject matter. It follows, it has a definition. Uh, I accept. What is the definition? Hmm. Uh, something established um, particle-like or is composed by particle? Something establishes particle-like or composed of particles. Take the subject, something establishes particle-like or composed of particles, it follows, it is matter. Uh, I accept. So take the subject, uh, light, it follows, it is particle-like or composed of particles. I accept. I accept. So take the subject, light, it follows, it is a wave. Um, <laughs> uh, I accept. So take the subject away. It follows. It is matter. Mm. Um, I accept. <laughs> so take the subject away. It follows. It is particle-like or composed of particles. Uh, I accept. This one is very tough one. Um, <laughs> So yeah. take the subject that which is particle-like or composed of particles. It follows. It has a definite location. Uh, I accept. So take the subject away. It follows. It has a definite location. Oh, the reason not true. Reason not true. So the reason is true because it is matter. Uh, uh, reason not true still. Okay, so take the subject light, it follows, uh, take the subject away, it follows, it is not matter. I accept. So take the subject uh, For light, ah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> take the subject uh, light, it follows, it is, it is not a wave. Mm. It is not a wave, um, I accept. Uh, take the subject light, it follows, it is not matter. Um, not matter. Can you repeat again? Uh, take the subject light, it follows, it is not matter. Um, no matter. Reason not true. Uh, so uh, light is not matter. And then comes... Yes, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, what I'm saying is the light is uh, the matter, but the web is not matter. 
Light is matter, uh -huh. but wave is not matter. Okay, so take the subject light, it follows it is not a wave. Uh, not wave. Reason not true. Okay, so take the subject light, it follows it is not a wave because it is matter. No, no pervasion. No pervasion. So take the subject. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay, let's clarify. Okay. Light is matter? Yes. Okay. And also a wave? A wave is not matter? Um so yes, wave it uh, uh, yeah, it's not matter, but okay. not pervasion. There's also one one of the examples that could be both. Mm, okay. So take the subject that which is are something which is both uh, a matter and matter a wave. And a wave. Mm -hmm. uh, it follows there is an example. Yes. What is the example? Um, light. Light, okay. So take the subject um, uh, So maybe the example is the color of red. The color red. Color of uh, the red light, maybe. Red light oh. or blue light, maybe. Okay, so take the subject, the color, the, the, the red, take the subject, a red light. It follows it is light. I accept. Take the subject, red light. It follows it is a color. Uh, I accept. So take the subject, uh, a red light. It follows it is form. Uh, I accept. Okay. So take the subject a red light, it follows it is matter. Yeah, I accept. So take that's the subject. reason. Reason why I accept the light is matter because light has most of light has color. And the color has to be form. And the okay. form has to be mat external matter. So that's uh, how to Okay, so take the subject a light, it follows it is a color? It, ha it's, it's or a it color. has a color. Uh, I accept. Okay, so take the subject, you accept has a color, yeah? Yes. Okay, so I take accept. the subject light, it follows it is, uh, it both is a color and has a color. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so um, take the subject. Um, Mm, take the subject uh, light, it follows, it is not a tangible object. No, a tangible Um I accept. Okay, so take the subject light, it follows, it is a tangible object. Uh, yes, uh, I accept. Sorry. It, it is a tangible object? Or uh, is tangible not? object means a rekja, right? Rekja. No, uh, uh, it's a reason not to. Reason or two. So take the subject light, it follows it is not a tangible object. I accept. It follows it is a tangible object. Uh, uh, reason not true. Because it follows it is a tangible object because it is composed of particles. Uh, no probation. No probation. So take the subject a tangible, uh, uh, composed of particles. It follows that what is composed of particles is not necessarily a tangible object. Uh, I accept. Uh, okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay, I think we are almost out of time. Right. So, like I said, what happens is if the if the challenger is skillful enough, they are able to trap the defender. If the challenger is not skillful enough, then the time will run out, and then the challenger says, "Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> We're done." Um, right. So that's what happened in this case. Yeah, in this case, it, we can argue many of things. Like one way is argue is once we accept that the light is particle, it has to be mass, right? Or it has to be some definite location. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if then light has a mass, usually is you know we considering it's light is massless. Even you know scientists when they accepted the, to the composed by particles, but that particle proton is no mass. So if there's a no mass, and then they have a no definite locations.
Mm. And that one contradiction, right? So another contradiction is if we don't accept the light is composed by particles, then we could argue because it's a matter, because it's a form, because of external uh, external material, uh, matters, something like that. <laughs> so it's a, uh, yeah. It's a very good one to argue. Yeah. Um, okay, so I hope that at least like gave a little bit of a taste of, you know, of uh, what it looks like. Um, we've got uh, maybe one minute, uh, maybe if anybody has a question that they would like to ask. Okay, yes, there's somebody at the front with their hand up. Uh, is it Swee? Swee? Uh, hi, Swee, would you like to come on the stage? <laughs> yeah, 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 please. Light at times uh, display particle like behavior, and at other times, this uh, display wave like behavior. Right. So, exactly. so it is, yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult uh, uh, to, to uh, pinpoint which, which side it, it, it falls into. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I want to say. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, it's a super topic for debate. Um, yeah, it's it's precisely because of that reason and because of the potential contradictions that that um, Geshe-la mentioned as well. So that's that's why we chose it. And maybe we can do one more. There's somebody on the very left with their hand up. Maybe you would like to come to the stage. Hi. managed to be on the stage. <laughs> okay. uh, I hear you say a uh, couple of times it, it, uh, about a tangible object, but is it a, uh, the same as a form or? Right, I meant to say a tactile object. That's the language that we're using, a tactile object, which is one of the, the categories of uh, exterior matter. Um, but is it same as form or? Right, so um, on our system, on, our, on the way that we're using the language, uh, according to the, the um, debate outline, uh, there are five types of uh, exterior matter. matter. And there's form, sound, smell, taste, and then tactile object, tangible object. So in that case, it wouldn't be form. Yes. Mm. But... Um, yeah, but I mean, you could make the argument that, like we were talking about in the in the um, breakout session just now, you could, you know, maybe try and make the argument that there is some kind of overlap there, but you would be going against the 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 outline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So I, I think. Would, oh, sorry, Keshla. Yeah. I would add one more thing, but the, how to differentiate those five divisions because of the different signs, you know, uh, giving sense expression or modality, uh, right? Mm. But it's based on the five senses. We, um, based on the five senses, that's why we make uh, five divisions in external matter, right? Um, okay, I think we have to leave it there for time reasons. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to send them in the WeChat or hold them to next time. Um, thank you so much, guys, for coming. Thank you, Geshe-la, for, you know, yeah. uh, you know <laughs> turning me in circles a little bit and making me confused.